What's up, everyone? We're back. We're back after the two-week break. It's everything at home. Let's not mess around with it. Get straight into it. Right, so, rolling into everything. No injuries at the international break, which has to be a force for us for the last few years. I'm, just, I'm actually, I'm delighted. I'm <laughs> delighted to come out relatively unscathed and I actually got to watch some decent football with Ireland. So, look, Joe, what do you think of the game they're going to? We are in a very lucky situation that we haven't come across with another Kevin De Bruyne international you know, injury that he normally likes to pick up. He actually played pretty well for Belgium uh, over the break, which is nice to see considering how poor he's been this season. But overall, we really shouldn't have any excuses for this game. Everton have hit a slight dip so far this season, just going into the break. Um, we've got almost a fully fit squad. Like we can choose our best team available. We've had that two-week break, albeit the players didn't really have a break. Um, so yeah, there's no reason not to be confident. Like there is zero excuses. We're at home. We have an extra day. We're on a Sunday. Look, look, there. Are, I think right. You've said there's no reason to not be confident. I'm confident, right? But they're just so stellar defensively. Benitez sets them up really well. That's the only thing that I have any gripes with. Like you know, what I mean, we find a hard breaking down low blocks, and we're playing against a low block. Only it's a five this time, and he does play two. I think he does play two half midfielders ahead of a Jordan. Yeah, he'd normally play like Allen, sometimes Davies, but most of the time if Ducore's fit, I don't know whether he's fit, I'm not sure on their squad. Yeah, he has a bad injury, so. Yeah, I mean, he likes to play like a Godfrey at a right back or a left back because they have like, when they have loads of injuries. Um, but it's a, it's a common theme with Rafa teams over the years. Like we saw when he was at Newcastle, the Newcastle, despite the golfing quality, they used to always give us a game and they beat us a couple of times just because of how well they set up and how well their game plan went, which is probably what he'll try and do now, you know, try and sit back. Um, you could say park the bus, but he will just sit back, counter-attack with the likes, the, you know, the pace that he's got with Damari Gray, Richarlison, Calvert lewin if he's fit, you know, he's got enough players to make a game plan work. And, you know, he could do. You could possibly see another Palace where they kind of sit back, absorb, and then break. And you saw that with the Palace second goal; they just sat back and broke on the counter and got that second goal. I mean, they almost messed it up, but they still got it. Like, that's the sort of game I'm expecting from a, a Rafa team. And it's just we've just got to be careful. And I do, I do think we can get through it. But it is just, you know, it's a bit worrying considering he did pretty well with a worse squad than he's got now. No. I think Palace, now you can call me mental there, I think Palace have a slightly better squad, not even a slightly better squad, a better attacking line of Moffler can end up beating City's defence a lot easier because of the trickery they have. Everything, you know, they are, they still have a very good forward line, but we should be fine. Like you said, there's no real excuse coming out here with nothing but three points. And I think we are going to get three points. Let's be clear, I think we don't think we're going to get three points. Full team. Like, we'll get into the team selection now in a minute, but everyone's fit. Like, I mean, this is one of those games where we don't have Sterling in, but I'd like, I'd like to see Sterling in. I'd be dead ass. I'd like to see Sterling in. I think he picked up the form a little bit on the way into the international break. Keep him in, see what happens. Now, we don't think he's going to do it. So he's not in the 11, but Joe, what do you think of Sterling going into the match? He had an okay international break. I don't think he scored, to I my knowledge. To I, meant, I meant before the international break. He was going, he was going well coming into it. Yeah, he was. He had a he had a good couple of games. Obviously, Bruce was the sort of kickstarter when he came off the bench, got an assist. Uh, he scored as well before the international break, which was massive. And then obviously he goes away with England, does you know what he usually does and plays well because he's just one of the best players when he does that. And I think the next few months could be big for him, considering we have this ever looming Afcon coming up where you could see the likes of Myres disappear for up to eight games, depending on how that goes. I don't think anyone knows at this moment, but you're looking at that and going, he could get a real run in the team. If Myres, you know, has to leave for seven or eight games, because it'd be between where well, you would think him and Jesus for that right wing spot. And Jesus isn't going to play like seven, eight games in a row. There'll be rotation. So he will get a chance at some point. I know there's been a lot of news surrounding his future, but, it's these sort of games where we say it all the time. Whenever we come up against the five, it's always, everyone mentions it. The space in between the fullback and the centre-back, the space in between. And we exploited it well against Man United in the derby. We really did. We got in between. We played really, really well in that game. And, you know, this is the sort of game where you look at, can Sterling perform? Now a low block, you wouldn't think it suits a player with pace, but, you know, he's got to, prove something because his contract is expiring no one knows what his future holds 
yeah, look, there's been the De Jong talks. If I love to see De Jong come City personally, right? I think he's a great, he's a fantastic footballer. I wouldn't like seeing the Sterling swap over there wasn't another attack now, but to be honest with you. But that's just me, right? Uh, we saw, like you said, you mentioned United, Foden's pace getting in behind in between that space, like you said, exploiting between Maguire and wan or whoever it was in that right, so, right hand side. I think Maguire's on the left, whatever, right? He is very good at getting that space with the pace he has. And I think Sterling could be, I don't see why Sterling couldn't do that because it's typical, knock the ball on, run in front of it. Exactly what Sane did, exactly what Foden was doing. It's what Sterling can do. I think, again, we haven't put him in, but he'd be a shoe in here. If you were to start, I wouldn't care. But Foden has to start. Foden has to start. And we have, spoiler alert, we have Grealish on the left, right? I think Foden needs to start on that right. And I think someone with as much pace as Sterling does need to start on the left. But look, we're talking about it enough. We'll stop, we'll stop teasing it. We'll just get into it right now. Right, so starting off, Edison and goal. Walker, Diaz, Laporte, Cancelo. Simple as. Can't really change it, job. Not really, no. I mean, you could argue Stones because Laporte is coming back off his suspension. But, I mean, that was just a one-off poor performance from Laporte on his part. Like, there's nothing else you can say apart from it was poor when he got himself sent off against Palace. Um, it's been the best back for this season due to injury and not really having too many other options to play for the majority. Um, so I think I, I, I don't really care who starts beside Diaz. Let's be honest, he's a shoe in and so are the two fullbacks. I think it's just a case of who do you go from here? Do you pick Stones because he is arguably the more on form considering he didn't get himself sent off, played well for England. Uh, or do you pick Laporte because he's been so solid apart from that one game? I I'm not really too fussed. It's it, I, I don't want to diminish Everton, but it's Everton. I'm not really that bothered. I think it'll be more than good enough anyway. Look, I'd be, I'd, be, I'd start Laporte, right? Because <laughs> I'm not going to ask Stones during that international break. It's Andorra. Andor? Is it Andor? Yeah. No, Albania. It was Albania. Albania and it was... San Marino. San Marino. You can't judge out that way. He was very good in the derby. In the very minimal stuff he had to do, he was very good in the derby, right? I'd I'd have a part starting. He's coming back in off the... He played Champions League. I thought he was quite good. I know they, they conceded too, wasn't it? Didn't it be a fight um, too? But, but, but I, it's been so long. It's been so long. I think it was one... Uh, the it one feels, goal against Bruges. That feels like a month ago. Probably because it was. It wasn't a month ago. About two weeks ago. Right, either way... Christ, either, either way, right? They can see that the one by two goals. He was he was solid enough. I think he might have. I think he lost man. Yeah, it went in off stands, didn't it? Yeah, it he, he was just cataclysmic defending. It doesn't matter, right? He's coming back in. I think he'll start. I don't see why he wouldn't start. It's perfect midfield, right? Rodri, sorry, have it beside me here. Rodri, De Bruyne, Bernardo. I think again, shoe in. Bernardo especially. He didn't start. I think he, he didn't start the one game against um, Ireland in which Ireland got a point. Uh, he didn't start that game. Uh, he probably started the next game after I think he got an assist and they lost. Um, but they, he's he's the best player on form at the minute. Like he has been our player of the year, and there's no doubt about that. There's absolutely nothing else you can say about it. That midfield is just perfect, especially for Everton. You want the balls in behind. You want the pace of Bernardo. De Bruyne again looked unreal for Belgium. He can come back. I don't, I'll be honest. I don't want, I saw the Belgian match. I couldn't even make out where he was playing. I think he was playing a bit further ahead of the midfield too. And look, if he wants to play that way, who he wants to play, Joe. Bernardo should be a shoe in, but we do have to be careful. He didn't miss that game against Ireland in a bit of training because of muscle fatigue. Because he, I let's think. be honest, he's been a bit overworked. Um, yeah. A little bit, but we know we know he can handle it. We know he can handle running about a lot because that is his game. But we do have to be careful because we don't want to burn him out completely at this stage of the season with you know the amount of games that we've got coming up. Um, but if he's fine to play, then you play him because you don't drop him if he's okay. Like, there's no reason to. He has been player of the season and so has Rodri. He's been up there for one of the players of the season. He's been great this, this season. He's really come into his own. Um... I'm not sure how he got on to Spain. I think he played the first game, didn't play the second game. Um, no, totally. I wouldn't Human play. I think him and Busquets, it's one player as one's dropped, one player as one's dropped. The exact same. Yeah. Which is like, look, roger has been unbelievable. I might have said a few things about him and you might have heard it and that might have been it. But look, going into the front tree there, Jesus, Bowden, Greedish, whoever you want to put it, it doesn't matter. 
I think Foden, if 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 Foden plays, it's gonna be on the right, on their left. Sorry, it's gonna be on the left because I want they're gonna to want to do the same thing as United, where left foot on the left, right foot on the right, breaks down the back foot. I think Everton play a back foot. I, me and Joe were, I was playing them in FIFA and they had a four and we're taking the piss out of them, right? That, but I think they play a five, and if they do, then you're gonna want the left foot on the left, the right foot on the right. Like Pep said, that's how you exploit them. So if that's the case, if it is this front three, really should be playing through the middle end. I don't mind. I think it's strong enough front three again. It's our full team. It probably won't be this because the amount of players we have to choose from. But I think, um, I think, I think it could be it now. You know, I, I, we're fairly confident. I think we came off um, a few right predictions, didn't we? We did. We did. We got a couple right before the break. Oh, so what do you think? What What do you think the front three is good enough? Is it good enough to be? <laughs> is it good enough? <laughs> well, if it's not good, if it's not good enough, it's worrying. Um, to my knowledge, with Everton. They they switch between a three they switch between this three or five and a, a four. They usually play a, a five when it comes to the bigger teams, you know, the bigger games, the ones where they expect to have less of the ball and counter more because they want more bodies to help defend, which that kind of describes City really, doesn't it? With uh seventy percent possession of which is what we'll probably have. But I mean we don't have Torres, we don't have that player who can fill in as like a I say as a striker, he he isn't, but we don't have that player who can fill that role. So with what we've got, you know, to work with now, it really could be anything. Now, if I'm if I'm picking this team, that's probably what you know Pep will go with. But if I was to change it, I would rather have Foden on the left and Grealish in the midfield with the Bruyne up front because I just think it works better. I don't. I'm not particularly a fan of Grealish off the left in games like this where you know they'll double up or you know he because he, he just doesn't make runs in behind because it's just not his game and that's not his fault that's you know his qualities that's what he brings i don't he think we've been the, using him properly he has on to the wall he's he's a bar retentive winger or midfield however you want to put it he could be he could work very well in the mid- look we know it's going to end up in we have a down spot tree we know it's going to end up in the four four two. that's how he always plays how he plays in the possession even in the possession it's not even a four four two because i don't know where the fuck can settle plays right but it's always it always ends up being a two up top. So Bernardo on the derby, he was he was hanging off the striker. It's such a fluid system. We don't know who's going to be where. And look, like you said, Joe, go on. I let you finish, but I feel like I've really caught over you there, Joe. To be honest, <laughs> it could it, it is everything. It is so fluid because of the lack of um, the focal point up front. That's just how it is. That's just how we play, which is a blessing and a curse because. We saw against United, against them three centre halves, you've got three players marking absolutely nobody because there's no one there, which you know creates more space, and especially when it's a midfield two, creates more space, which we could exploit. But then again, it means when we inevitably start pumping in crosses in the the fiftieth minute onwards, then we have no one in there because we've packed out the midfield, uh, which is our strongest point in the uh, point in the pitch. Our strongest point is midfield. Like we do have a great defence, but we're all. You know, where we win games in the midfield, we say this all the time. You know, if you win the midfield battle, you probably win the game. And I think that's what we have to look to do, especially if they undermine it with two players. I think having them ball retention players who can, you know, knock it one touch, two touch, I think that's, you know, that could be crucial. And we've struggled to create this season at times. Um, So it'd be interesting to see how we get on. I'm hoping that, you know, off the back of having some good form for Belgium, to Brian will actually, you know, start to play even better because he still hasn't reached the level that he you know has been for the last few seasons but you know we're just gonna have to wait and see you know anything could happen on the day players could turn up players could go missing and then you probably won't pick this team because it's pep he likes to pick names out of a hat as we all know it's it's gonna be relay we don't know what's gonna happen like we 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 had a feeling about the derby we saw him play the left foot on the left and the right foot on the right for that um for that Chelsea match, we're like, right, where are we going there? And look, at the end of the day, <laughs> it, again, call me mental, right? Everything are going to be a better set up defense than that United team. It's going to be a better, it's a, a better oiled machine at the back because of how good a defense coach Benitez is. It's his game, it's how he set it up, right? So it's going to be a lot harder to write down United. I don't care if they have 80 million pound superstars in there, it's going to be a lot harder to write down. And it's not going to, we're not going to destroy them. It's not going to be like that. I don't think we're going to go out and pepper them. But on that, Joe, Scarpity. I'm going to go 2-0 um, just because of the doubts over players like Calvert-Lewin, who we know is a threat. I just think if he's, he's missing, then I... 
I think if he's missing, it's a big miss for them because he's just a massive focal point. We see what he adds to the team. He is that sort of target forward when they pump, especially a Dinier cross to Calvert Lewin. Like that is where a lot of them goals come from. They scored one uh, last year. It wasn't Calvert Lewin who scored. I ended up going in off Richardson, but it was cataclysmic. Then I remember being so annoyed that like we we fell apart for that goal, and we ended up winning, but we fell apart for that goal. That's what it is. Richardson was not a small man either. I think he'll probably. Would he end up starting? Uh, if he's if he's fit, which I think he is, yeah, he'll probably start through the middle if there's no Calvert Lewin. Like he is a, like Aaron Gordon's getting minutes. I've seen a couple of crosses from him. He can run a play. He's very dangerous. But look. If they're missing Carver Leon, I can't see Ambo with myself now. I think we go 3 1. You said 2 I think 2 0, but I don't want to copy it, so I'll go 3 1. 3 0. I'll go 3 0. Fuck it. Let's go for it. 3 0. Right? And look, that's not yourselves, right? That's not what you think. Take into account their team, take into account our probable team. Let us know your team below. <laughs> go to it. Like the video. I think we're, what, 4 462, Joe? 472? Um, what? 470. Oh, 5 4, would you hear me? 5. 4. I was about to say, we're on 5. Yeah, no, 5. It's, look, it's it's 500 odd, right? I don't have the exact number in front of me, but we're trying to hit. What did we say? We're trying to hit seven, was 700 by the end of the year? We want to try and hit something around like 700, 750 by the end. That's that high, right? I'm not sure if we've done a thing since the 500, right? 700. Why well, hit 700 by the end of the year? Like the video, share it around. See that thing. Nice one. See you out there. See, watch it on. See the watch it on. It's back. Go on. Good luck.